Louis C. Gross II here. How are you feeling this evening? You know, the moral arc of the universe bends towards justice. What I, you know, what, what was that? What, what was that about? Look what's happening. Look at our school system. Did you know twenty nine thousand students have left Illinois because of this debacle? Twenty nine thousand students. That, you know that's really that's terrible. And you, what have you done about it? Yeah, see, I'm an advocate. I'm an advocate for what's right. I'm an advocate for what's happening in this town, in this state. And it seems to me it's at a standstill. It goes back to the old saying, the more things change, the more they remain the same. Mike Royko wrote a book called The Boss. The Boss, I'm sorry. Called The, Bo the Boss. He depicts Mayor Daly, the old one. The one that was the architect of what, we, what we're dealing with now. But like Patty Barr said back in 1930-something, Chicago ain't ready for reform. And look what's happening. Where's the reform at? Hmm? Listen, we are in dire straits. Our leadership, especially Chicago and Illinois itself, from City Hall to Springfield, what do we have going? What do we have going? Nothing. Because everybody's on an ego trip. Everyone's on an ego trip. You got Mike Madigan and Ron. Ron tries to bring that, bi that, that business acumen to, to uh, the capital. But see, dealing with him, he has baggage. Even though he did go to our black churches for once in his life because he was running for election and you know, made these promises, and then he's never been seen again. That seems to be the, the running bit with these preachers and these politicians. Politicians being invited to these, you know, to these congregations because, you, you know what, there's always, you know, you wash my hand, I wash yours. And that's what, that's what we're dealing with. And in and, and, and that, the, the general citizenry does not receive what they're supposed to receive. Matter of fact, everybody up here receives what they're going to get, and down here you get nothing but, but, but the drippings. I, we need to, you know, you need to really just look at this. And, and what amazes me that not only do the politicians deal with business as usual, look at our, look at us. And look at you. Because you're not going to say anything, you're just going to absorb it and deal with it. And, you, and in dealing with it, it just gets worse. No jobs. No motivation. No motivation to send your kids to school. You know, I've been dealing with some children now who've missed 54 and 59 days uh, of unexcused absences, absences in school. That, that's uncalled for. And then the parents, uh, uh, well, I thought it was going. I thought she was going. Impossible. Just say you don't care. <laughs> Just say you don't care. It was a time people fought for, you, for your child to go to school. Brown versus the, the Board of Education. Thurgood Marshall. Houston. These people were very instrumental in changing the complexion of the educational system as we see it, as it was. But now you come here. Chicago. Number one, like Martin Luther King said, this is one of the worst cities he's ever been in in terms of prejudice. And he's all over the South. And it still goes on. And you do nothing about it. South side, west side, over the north side, the Gold Coast, they wouldn't even deal with this foolishness that we deal with. I was just thinking about how a lot of people come from different countries and become your doctor, your lawyer, your attorney, your grocer, call you a thief, and you've been here all along. 
You've been here all along to let somebody else come in and take over. It's like Marcus, Marcus Garvey says, beware of an individual that comes into your community and wants to help you and assist you. And then, you know, because why? Ulterior motives. Ulterior motives. And who's taking the blunt of this? Our children, our teenagers, our students. 40,000 of them homeless. That goes to that crack cocaine and, and all those other illicit drugs that are being consumed by the parent who can't even raise their own child. That's the reason why DCFS, Department of Children and Family Services, has so much business. Because lack of responsibility, lack of doing the right thing for the right reasons to get the right results. Oh, man. It's just a shame. You know, and the powers that be realize this and play on it. I mean, let, 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 let's, look, let's break this down. If Chicago had a 25-year plan previously and then they executed it, here's how it went. And on Roosevelt Road, University of Chicago, no, I'm sorry, University of Illinois at Chicago, all of Roosevelt Road has been modified, and it, it, they're putting people to work. Yeah, people of color, not so much. But everybody's working on Roosevelt Road. Now let's f travel further south. 35th Street, IIT, Illinois Institute of Technology. Hey, do you remember there used to be projects for 22nd Street all the way down to 55th Street? Look at it now. Gourmet shops, condos. And where's that brother at? <laughs> I'm going to tell you. Everybody, their family is working. Everybody except the brother. Now let's go further south. University of Chicago. Hey, 63rd Street, College Road, all that's been modified. You got residential centers and all that. Where's the brother at? He's not working. Now, 25-year plan. You see how, you know, you, you go down State Street, you see how that's been modified to death. You, you look all over, everything's modified. Now, the increase in crime, that's the thing young people call displacement. Let me explain that to you. If I have, say, a rodent in my home, and I found out where it's residing, in, you know, in, on the side wall. I plug it up so it can't get in. What does it do? It finds another place to live within my, my home. Same thing happened with the brother. When they level the projects, that's about 80, 100,000 people going where? They're being displaced. They're being displaced. Where? In your community. And whatever they were doing in the projects, in which projects was a technical, technical term for a study that was done in terms of putting black folks mile high up to see what happens. That's the crab, you know, crab in the barrel act. You know, put them all together and try and crawl. You saw what happened. You saw what happened. And they knew it. So now when we talk about displacement, they knew that was going to happen also. What happens there is the folks that were living in the projects now live next door to you. And your little children, along with their children, you know, people that were used to selling drugs in the, in the jets, in the surrounding areas, now are trying to sell those drugs within these, little, these communities, these pockets of communities. West side, south side, all the way out to Roseland. And now you have what you call a clash. Hey, man, this is my corner. Oh, man, for that. now I'm going to shoot you because you, you, you stopped me from making my money off the misery of, the, of this illicit drugs. And what's happening? The powers that be just lay right back and watch. Hell, if the police aren't killing you, you're killing yourself. There's no need for the Ku Klux Klan. There's no need for the Red Squad. 
because you are the Red Squad and you are the Klan. I guess people are really laughing of other, other cultures at what's happening with our culture. Within two months, you have over 80 deaths, 80 murders. For what? You can't, for what? You don't own anything. For some jewelry and a Cadillac. And that, that lasts all but what, a year? Then the money that you did make is like going to the dentist. Once you finally go, he will get all the money. That is equated to your lawyer. Look how much he makes when you finally come to see him on a drug charge or a murder charge of your own. And then you use the word brother. Please. You're not my brother. Mm -mm. I'm telling you straight up. Now, this plan that's going on, it's already been executed. Look what's happening. Here you go. It costs at least twenty-eight to thirty thousand dollars to apprehend, to prosecute, and convict an individual who happens to be black or Hispanic in this town. That money per individual generates Spoons, cups, cars, employment for the locals. The sheriff's department, okay, you're incarcerated, you're an inmate. You need a coat. You need a jacket. You need some shoes or boots or whatever. You need a spoon or fork. And you need to be fed. And you need medical attention. All at the taxpayer's expense. Oh, yeah. And that's just to convict you in this town. Now, after, after, uh, after conviction, now, mind you, we, we, we're talking about $30,000 right there per inmate. So now, you're transferred to Dwight for females, Menard, Pontiac, Stateville, Joliet. That's another $38,000 to do the same thing. Employ some people in that community to be prison guards. You got to you house these, uh, these, these individuals. You also have to feed them, clothe them, medical attention. So you have to have a doctor to come in. You, know, you have to have a dentist to come in. You know, and then by the middle wars of the state, if they have a heart ailment, liver ailment, that's being taken care of by the state, and they get first privy. Now here's a person that's a legitimate citizen, making you know, paying his taxes, doing everything, but has a heart ailment. It has to be put on a list. Our kidney ailment has to be put on a list in order to, to receive one. But if you're incarcerated, you've number one priority. Can you believe that? Here's a guy that's robbed, raped, and steal and stolen. Now, a water state, he gets first preference over a heart, over a kidney, over a lung. Where's the the where's the justice and where is what's right and wrong there? You see, just like with the drugs. Now we know that you got bankers and lawyers importing this stuff in because, hey, these brothers ain't got the money for that. And even if they did, they don't know how to, well, they probably do. They connect it, but uh, to a degree. But all that money is coming in towards getting you addicted, addiction. The pursuit of pleasure at the expense of your freedom and also trapped in memory. Yeah, but anyway. Moving on. Now, the powers that be, and if you realize, remember uh, in Afghanistan, when they have uh, the poppy fields, they never bombed them. <laughs> they did every, that the oil fields. Everything else is bombed. That, you know, that was tr strategic. You got to think about these things. Now, they bring it in large quantities. They bring it in, the powers that be who run this country, distribute it, Get you hooked on it. And, and they, they, they the irony. Get you hooked on it. Then, first, they, you, 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 you're giving up all your money and everything else, and you sold your soul. That's number one. You're broke, but you're still, you know, still trying to get high. Now, they put you in rehab. They put you in rehab and charge for that, too. So they, got, they introduced it to you, the drug to you, put you in rehab. Then, the next move is jail. So they put you in jail, finally, for the deeds that you've done. 
But here's the kicker. They put the penitentiary on the stock market, which means that if you're black or Hispanic, you're a commodity. Orange juice, pork rinds, silver, gold, and brothers and Hispanics. Commodities. Oh! Now, once again, they get paid for that. They hook you, cool you out, then they incarcerate you, and then make the money. All, all three ways of making money off of you and your sickness. But now, we've talk, covered that area. What about your child? Huh? No father, no mother. We're looking at the Department of Children and Family Services. Stay operated and stay confused, <laughs> believe me. They get paid, but also they take the child out of the biological home, put it in the foster care. That's more money being spent. The child, number one, is going to do one thing. You ever heard that thing, blood sticking in water? So what does the child do? In foster care, he'll so try to sabotage it. But one thing for sure, he will call home. Even though that parent beat him on a regular basis, you have to realize something. Even in one instance, there is a, a, a moment of love, even, 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 even through, through the brutality. It is a moment of love. And that child will grasp that and cherish that forever. But at the same time, the whole system, and, uh, but hey, the person has to take responsibility for what they do, too. But, it was, it, you know, it's like everything is geared against you in terms of trying to step up that ladder. But in all this, that child now starts dealing with contradictions because he's seeing society through his parents' eyes, through his neighborhood's eyes, and, and he's seeing that it's a lie. And what way was the thing about it? get a job, no, go to school, get a job, and, you know, everything will be all right? You know, no. And then there have been several studies, you know, in terms of the system, the educational system. Are we training our children, you know, to be robots? And then if somebody says that they don't want to conform to one situation to another situation, are we trying to knock down conform, you know, uh, uh, not being conform, not, not being a non-conformist? And that's what we're trying, that's what they do. You know, if you, you know, if you step aside to a different drum, they're going to ostracize you. And say, oh, look here, he's not a team player. Same way it goes with the police department. If you don't, you know, uh, go along with them abusing the neighborhood, then you're not a team player. And, you know, that code of silence. They make you feel bad because you, you know, wouldn't tell the truth about what's really going on. Hmm. And, I, and you know what? I also think about Cabrini Green. <laughs> they did a piece on Cabrini Green on Channel 11. Man, I think it's Barnett. There was the all of them over there. There's still all of them over there. You know, they systematically got rid of all the residents. And do you know that a Jewish front, a development agency took it over? And now the same people that were in the neighborhood that thought could come back, no. Matter of fact, when, when some of the children did come back, they looked at the people that were residing there now, looked at them like, are you crazy? What, what are you doing here? And that was the all of them but Barnett. And when asked about it, he, he told the people, oh, everything's going to be all right. You know, uh, check, check this out. You ever heard of a Judas goat? You know what a Judas goat does? It's trained to lead the rest of the flock through the slaughter pen. It stays alive, but the rest of them are what, slaughtered. It's called a Judas goat. And when I look at City Hall and Springfield, there are a lot of goats making a lot of money. At your expense. And what do you do? You might listen to me and you might not. But then you, hey, I don't, you really don't re need me to tell you this, but you already know it. But psychologically speaking, you suppressed it. You don't want to think about it till it manifests itself in terms of somebody doing something to your child, uh, your home, or invading your home, or selling drugs on, 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 your, on your corner. Then all of a sudden you're in an uproar. But other than that, it's cool, as far as you're concerned. Now I ask you, you see what's going on.
It's right before your very eyes. You got businessmen now in positions of authority doing nothing in terms of you and yours. Only when they have to. Just think, if it's not me for those cameras, it'll have been business as usual, you know, brutalizing our, our young people and getting away with it. Just so happens that they had a, a camera on this one. And then all of a sudden, they can't, the body cameras break down so they can commit mayhem. Hey, one thing I know, karma comes back and bites you. The law of motion. For every action, there's equal and corresponding reaction. And it's coming. It's coming. I mean, it, all through history, there's a thing called revolution. And if you deal with the art of war, it doesn't necessarily have to mean with violence. Look at it. The sun and the moon can change on you. The birds. Matter of fact, what can take down a $3,000, 3,000-pound 3, airplane but a bird? I got a call. A question or comment. Go ahead. Yes, good evening. Good evening. I, I, I think that the problem started, the big problem started in Chicago. I don't have the exact date, but in the maybe 1990, early 1990, they passed some kind of ordinance or something that declared Chicago a sanctuary city. And then from that point on, the mayors didn't want any involvement with the police departments to cooperate with these immigration and custom enforcement mm -hmm. people. But as a result, the drug cartels aren't stupid. They are so well funded. So much drugs to this day are pour into this city. So these young kids who are vulnerable to making easy money right. because they've never you know, known what it was like to work for minimum wage like perhaps you or I did, right. they you know, they get hooked on that stuff, and once you've tasted that, they don't want to go back. That was the most asinine decision ever made, and to this day, until they change that, people, if I were a parent of these young kids, I'd get the hell out of here, too, because they, that isn't going to end until, you know, the mayor, he doesn't have a spine, or the last mayor doesn't have a spine, and until you get more people to just say, look, we're sick of this. And that's not being racist or anything. Right, right, right. God's honest truth. And God bless you for hanging in there for any of these young kids who still want to try to work honestly for a living and get away from that. Because with these cowards that we have in political office now, right. everything is political correctness. So good luck to you, Lewis, and you hang in there, buddy. Thank you very much. I really appreciate your comment. Carl, you only have a question or comment quick. Hey, Lewis. Hey, Stevie. Hey, listen, let me tell you. Don't think that we was not listening. Sometimes it's a wonderful art to just to use your ears and listen. You can learn a lot. That's why I tell you every Friday we <laughs> wait for you to speak. And sometimes it's just a great day to put you on your gums and just listen. <laughs> you gave some wonderful information. I hope there was a lot of people that was listening. But again, I'm going to tell you, don't worry. You wasn't talking for nothing. I Thank was you. listening. Thank Let you. me get out there so I can hear your response. And, and rem my response is, I love you very much. Thank you. Uh, all right. Thank you. Thank you very much. You know, I'm so happy that some people, you know, call in and, you know, voice their opinions. But what I was saying, look, it's real. I'm not going to tell you anything that I haven't researched. I'm not going to tell you anything that you already know. But somebody has to say it. Somebody has to do something about it. We just can always just look up, you know, look through TV, and, you know, let them, you know, let them say something. You absorb it, but then don't execute the, the information that you receive. So my thing is this: forget this marching. Start using postcards. Inundate, you know, the powers that be with mail and documentation. They, they'll get the message through that if they can read. Okay. <laughs> now listen, our children are the thing uh, we're blessed to have them. We got to keep working with them and let them know each time we love them. But at the same time, we don't, we're not going to deal with that behavior. And like the previous caller said, you know, they're used to that fast money, but the fast money leads you to a fast track to jail. And matter of fact, I think the whole south side of Chicago almost has been on an ankle bracelet or been incarcerated one way or another. I know somebody that has been. So we're really traumatized too. We need to deal with that from another's perspective. But as always... And I truly mean this. 
If you feel as though you're running out of rope, tie a knot and hang on, everything's going to be okay, I assure you. Peace and love.